Hey y'all, in my last video, we did an introduction to radian measures. And so now in this video lesson, we are going to be looking at some word problems. So basically applications of using radian measures. One of those applications is the length of an arc. An arc is what you see here, this little segment. Uh, the length of an arc on a circle depends on both the angle of rotation and the radius of the circle. And that gives us this formula where S equals R times theta, where S is the length of the arc, R is the radius, and theta is the measure of the angle in radians. So that's important. If you're given degrees, make sure you convert to radians for this problem. And then if we manipulate that equation a, a little bit and we instead needed theta or r or whatever, but in this case, if we just need theta, then we can divide both sides by r and we get theta equals s over r. And like I just said, if you needed r instead, you divide both sides by theta. So you can kind of play with this equation to come up with other equations. I have an example here. Find the distance that the Earth travels in one month in its path around the sun. Assume that the path of the Earth around the sun is a circle of radius 93 million miles. Round to one decimal place. Uh, that's not right. Sorry about that. Let me erase that. Ooh. Round to one decimal place. The end. End of story. And also keep in mind that one month is one twelfth of a full rotation. So I mentioned earlier that if we're talking about the angle, we need it in radians. And they only said, or this problem always said, only said that the basically the angle, the piece that we're looking at is one month. So if we envision a circle and the full circle is two pi, then one month is a twelfth of the full circle. So when we multiply that, we get two pi over 12 and reduce, we get pi over six. So this represents theta, our angle. Our formula says S equals R times theta. And it gives us a radius of 93 million miles. I'm just gonna say 93 for now. I'll just do it, million miles times theta pi over six. And then it does say to round to one decimal, so we can just type this in the calculator. I'm gonna do approximately, pull this calculator up. I'm just gonna do 93 times pi over six. That's not correct. It is right. Uh, sorry, I got messed up. Okay, so 93 times 93 million miles times pi over six is about 48.7 million miles. And that's all. This example is very similar, but we start with uh, degrees instead. So we're going to have to convert this to radians before we can proceed, since the formula states that theta has to be in radians. We're finding the distance along an arc, so that's S, on the surface of the Earth that subtends a central angle of five minutes. And one minute is equal to 160, not one over 60 degree. The radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles, round to the thousandth. And uh, I want y'all to go ahead and try it. Remember that our formula is S equals R theta, where theta is in radians. So pause it, try it, come back and check your work. So basically, if one minute is one over 60 degree, then five minutes would be five over 60 degrees. And then you can reduce that to one twelfth degree. To convert to radians, we multiply it by pi over 180. And you can multiply that out to get pi over to 2,160, or we can just leave this like that 
in either case, it's fine. But we are going to take the radius and we're going to multiply by our radians. And then get an estimation to the thousandths place. And we get about 5.7, how where are we going to the thousandths? Uh, that would be six zero if we rounded um, for our, what was this? Uh, miles. And that's it. The next application we're going to look at for radians is the area of a sector. So the area of a sector created by any angle theta radians is area equals one half of radius squared times theta in radians. So if an irrigation pipe is 450 meters in length, what is the area that can be irrigated after a rotation of two pi over three radians? And remember, if you're given degrees instead, then you need to convert to radians before you can get started on this problem. So we're just gonna take half the radius times the angle. And then we can just get a, an estimation, not estimation, approximation of this by typing it in and getting the decimal answer. I did find, I forgot the little, make sure you be careful there. I forgot the little squared in my formula. So make sure you don't forget that. And then we're gonna type this in. We got a half times 450 squared times two pi over three. I wonder, I'm curious about something. I wondered if the parentheses matter there. They do not. Uh, I'm just super paranoid about parentheses. I did get bitten by parentheses in, anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter. So we should get about two one two zero five seven point five meters squared since we're talking about area. Um, if you want to keep this in terms of radian so that we're not approximating, then we can um, get a different color. We can divide the twos, and then we have 450 squared over three. And so we would have um, 67,500 pi meters squared instead. That would be an exact solution if you wanted to have an exact solution in its place. So that's all you have to do for that one. If you have the radius, if you have the central angle in radians, then you just plug it into the formula and that's it. But uh, do remember if you have the diameter instead that you need to cut that in half before you plug it into your formula. Then we have angular velocity as an application problem. So measuring the angle of rotation over a given amount of time is called the angular velocity. The formula for angular velocity is uh, kind of looks like a little W equals theta over T, where that is angular velocity. Theta is the angle of rotation expressed in radians. And T is the time to complete a rotation. Then once we know angular velocity, we can use that to find linear velocity, which is equal to the radius times angular velocity. And I think the little W symbol is omega. Uh, pretty sure, anyway, irrelevant. But so we have an example, a circular planetary ring of radius 115,000 kilometers completes one full revolution in 290,000 hours. What is the angular velocity of the ring? Angular velocity is velocity angular velocity equals theta over time. So it does say one full revolution. So if we're talking about an entire circle, that's two pi is our angle. And then the time it takes to complete the full revolution 
is 290,000 hours. And then if we were to simplify that, you could write that as pi over 145,000 radians per hour. We are wanting to make sure we uh, label here. And then what is the linear velocity of a rock on the ring? For linear velocity, we take V linear velocity equals radius times angular velocity. And our radius is 115,000 kilometers times our angular velocity, pi over 145,000 radians per hour. If we were to keep this in exact form, which means keep the radian, we would multiply the numerator, 115,000 pi kilometers, and then the denominator would be 145,000 hours. And then if we were to reduce, if you want to reduce this, we can just type in 115 over 145, because the zeros divide. Math fraction enter, we get 23 pi over 29 kilometers per hour. And that's it, that's all you have to do. So that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help and I'll see you in the next one.